Hey guys, so I want to do a quick little series here on the seven deadly sins, okay, which are pride, covetousness, lust, anger or wrath, gluttony, envy, and sloth, okay, and so these will not be exhaustive studies by any means, they'll just be really quick, I'll give a few verses, a few points, and that'll be it, but it'll be on the plate later to do more exhaustive studies on these things. There could be many, many studies on each of these sins. Um, there is no particular verse in the Bible that says these are the seven deadly sins, but these are sins that we see all throughout the Bible. Um, you know, they are common sins that you know we're all probably going to deal with throughout our life. And so the first one that I'm going to talk about is pride. What is pride? Webster's 1828 Dictionary says that pride is an inordinate self-esteem an unreasonable conceit of one's own superiority in talents, beauty, wealth, accomplishments, rank, or elevation in office, which manifests itself in lofty affairs, distance, reserve, and often in contempt of others. Okay, so pride is basically like an attitude, okay, an attitude that highly esteems oneself and looks down at others, okay. Now, how can pride destroy our life? And we're going to look at four quick points about this, and they're pretty much going to overlap some of them, but anyways, how can pride destroy our life? First of all, pride lures us into living independently of God. Psalm chapter 10, verse 1 through 11 says, Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth. The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above, out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor, he doth catch the poor, when he draweth him into his nest. He croucheth and humbleth himself, that the poor may fall by his strong ones. He hath said in his heart, God hath forgotten, he hideth his face, he will never see it. Okay, so these proudful people, wicked sinners, they think that God doesn't see what they are doing, all the wickedness and all the evil that they are doing. There is an incompatibility between pride and arrogance and the presence of God in our heart. The proud person depends on himself or herself rather than on God. This causes God's guiding influences to leave his or her life. When God's presence is welcome, there is no room for pride because he makes us aware of our true self. Okay. Now, another point, how can pride destroy our life, is that pride undermines our faith. Mark chapter 6, verse 1 through 5 says, And he went out from thence, speaking of Jesus, and came into his own country, and his disciples follow him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, from whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him? That even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joseph, and of Judah, and, of, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And he could there do not do no mighty work save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. Jesus could have done greater miracles in Nazareth, but he chose not to because of the people's pride and unbelief. 
The miracles he did had little effect on the people because they did not accept his message or believe that he was from God. Therefore, Jesus looked elsewhere, seeking those who would respond to his miracles and message. So, how can pride destroy our life? Pride lures us into living independently of God. And pride undermines our faith. And next, pride can cut us off from God and others. And this kind of goes with what I just read, but... Luke chapter 18, verse 9 through 14 says, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. These were proudful, proud people. Two men went up into the temple to pray. Okay? Uh, Jesus is speaking this parable to prideful people. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. The Pharisee in Jesus' parable did not go to the temple to pray to God, but to announce to all within earshot how good he was. The tax collector went recognizing his sin and begging for mercy. Self-righteousness is dangerous. It leads to pride, causes a person to despise others, and prevents him or her from coming to God. The tax collector humbled himself and received God's grace and mercy to become a child of God. Now, I want to note that this passage does not support the popular sinner's prayer that is taught in so many false church systems today. The tax collector was not saved because he prayed a prayer. This passage does not teach, however, or this passage does teach, however, lordship salvation. The tax collector asked for forgiveness because of his faith and humility towards God. For one to come to God with a sincere heart, they must humble or submit themselves to him. Now it should also be noted that this passage does not teach that Christians should call themselves sinners or say things like, we are all sinners or I'm just a sinner saved by grace. As Christians, we still need to humble ourselves before God on a daily basis, even after salvation. And when we know we have committed a sin, we should ask God for forgiveness. We need to stay humble, not to maintain our salvation, but to continue to be pleasing to God as we possibly can and to receive his greatest blessings. Of course, we have the help of the Holy Spirit and this is called progressive sanctification, although it still takes effort on our part. We all need God's mercy every day. Don't let pride in your achievements cut you off from God's greatest blessings. So, how can pride destroy our life? Pride lures us into living independently of God. Pride undermines our faith. Pride can cut us off from God and others. And last but not least, pride distorts our view of ourselves and others. Ephesians 2, chapter 2, verse 11 through 14 says, Wherefore remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Jews and Gentiles alike could be guilty of spiritual pride. Jews for thinking that their faith and traditions elevated them above everyone else. Gentiles for trusting in their achievements power or possession 
Spiritual pride blinds us to our faults and magnifies the faults of others. Be careful not to become proud of your salvation. Instead, humbly thank God for what He has done and encourage others who might be struggling in their faith. So, the opposite of pride is humility. So, brothers and sisters, let us pray and ask God that we will remain humble. Let us humble ourselves before God. Thank God for our salvation. And um, thank you for watching this video. God bless. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.